Okay, I woke up this morning a mess. This eye stings for some reason. I broke my microphone stand and I haven't even had my morning coffee, but there still needs to be a point made because one of the things I most often see leveled against Star Wars as a criticism that I completely disagree with is that Anakin is just some whiny a who has a sudden change to the dark side, and it's completely unjustified within the narrative. Did we watch the same f***ing movies? Now you're probably thinking, Daniel, why does this video already feel a little bit different? That's because my editor from my second channel, Ben, is doing this one. Say hello by like wiggling the camera, Ben. I don't, I don't know, whatever you wanna do. Ben is amazing and I appreciate what he's able to bring to the table. This is his first time editing for the main channel. If you'd like an example of his previous work that I absolutely love and the kind of quality he brings to the table for our second channel all the time, here's a clip he made combining Lord of the Rings and Raid Redemption. It's, it's truly spectacular. Yeah. All right. I think that's a media mask at, at most. Kicking this off though, we're gonna go ahead and jump into the beats of Anakin's story and show just how well earned his turn to the dark is once you look at it more analytically, removed from the clouded lens of the dark side of bad writing, laying over the prequels. Kicking it off the very beginning, we have Anakin as a small child. This is someone who is literally a slave, does not know his father and his mother is also a slave with him. That doesn't exactly speak of stable childhood. We then see some magical wizard show up and instead of maybe just, you know, stealing the child out of slavery or a million better options than putting his life in danger. Coincidentally, while I was doing one final approval edit on this, I had Mr. Sunday movies in the background and they were talking about this movie as well. And they mentioned the fact that like, the guy who's keeping Anakin as a slave is a slaver, so the Jedi could have just killed him or Qui-Gon could have done the pod race. Why did they make the child do it? Well, because they really love putting in children in danger. That's, that's the only logical solution I can think of, or the Mr. Sunday movies put forward as well. Qui-Gon Jinn, a great Jedi, decides, hey, how about I get the kid, if you let the kid compete for his life, for our entertainment in some pod racing. One of the most dangerous sports ever conceived of. And they're like, this is a wonderful idea. This is what good people should be doing. Putting little boys' lives at risk just for the sake of, I don't want to fight this winged alien dude. I mean, it's not exactly looking like there's going to be police showing up if you just take this kid. You're on Tatooine. But obviously this works. Anakin wins and they leave his mother behind in slavery, which this has been brought up quite a bit, and it's such a good point. Why didn't they send someone to rescue her later on? They met her, she was a wonderful person. They went back to the Jedi Council. They now have definitely the funds available to them, but no, they don't do that because An Anakin can't be close to his mom for some horrible reason. Uh, well, we're gonna get into that soon. God, my eye. Oh, it probably looks like I'm weeping. I used eye drops, that's why it looks like I'm crying. Okay. So now Anakin, while he's being trained as a child soldier in complete isolation from any of the life he knew, has to just know his mother is out there on a planet as a slave. And I, 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 oh, that's not acceptable, Jedi. Also, let's rewind a little bit to the whole child soldier thing because I know people are gonna be like, well, they don't put the kids in actual day. Yes, they do. One, Anakin at the end of episode one is not exactly a priority, his safety in terms of like, they just leave him in a gunship and they're like, yeah, Stay there, kid. Okay, that's a good job babysitting Qui-Gon Jinn. I've heard people say like Anakin wouldn't have gone to the dark side if Qui-Gon Jinn lived. Maybe? Probably less likely to have. But this is not Poppy of the Year. This is Liam Neeson with a bad beard. And while he's actively being trained to fight as a child soldier and seeing violence on the daily, he is also quite literally religiously being told to suppress his emotions. I don't know what child psychologists in the Star Wars universe think is healthy for 
anyone. And I've also heard the argument that these are aliens, so maybe they process emotions differently. And that's actually why some of the dialogue is so weird. But I disagree with that insane justification for some kind of shifty writing at points. And regardless of your emotional development, I think we can safely say universally across the, the multiverse even, child soldiers not good. And indoctrination of children into a cult, not good. And I will maintain the Jedi is a cult because now we have that confirmed in the canon of the main movies. Even Luke was disillusioned with the Jedi. He spoke of their arrogance and failures, especially in this period. And I believe that's how they led to being child abusers. They are systematic child abusers. And then Anakin gets it worse than most because yes, he has to think back to dear old mom who is but then, once he's a late teenager, he's thrown into combat and has to deal with the moral ramifications of killing others, seeing people he cares about dies all the time, fighting with and commanding clone troopers, which pose their whole uh, own moral horrific ideas. These are people who are bred and trained for combat from birth. The Jedi have like a really big kink for getting people into combat young. Yes, these people have like their age sped up, and that makes it even kind of weirder. Like these are like four year olds that look 30 that are now helping child soldiers murder. This is, oh my God. I in general really like Obi-Wan as a character. I don't think he was a good teacher because he treated Anakin more like a friend than a student, which speaks to like, yeah, Obi-Wan saw this kid who's been through so much and he got really close to him. It's the best friend he has in the world. And I'm glad Obi-Wan gave him that. But in a wartime situation, it gave him huge blind spots for many red flags Anakin started to show. First of all, in season something or other of the Clone Wars, Ben, if you just put in Anakin kills someone on YouTube, Clone Wars, he just straight up kills someone in front of Obi-Wan and goes like, oh, he mean, he was threatening to blow some stuff up and Obi-Wan's like response is like, you shouldn't have done that. Do you, do you see the passive attitude towards life that's developing here? Because we also see several different times throughout the Clone Wars series, Anakin's dark side tendencies come out. He also fails as a master of his own and as a pupil leave him, another friend abandoning him. Abandonment issues start to become a real problem for Anakin. He even has a love interest, but guess what? The Jedi tell him, you cannot fall in love. The one like universally good, this is okay thing, they, they don't want their child soldiers having that. Why? I genuinely do not know. Although it is worth note that a common practice to real world cults is that they separate you from anyone around you who might care about you enough to mention, hey, maybe this is actually kind of a cult you're getting involved with, oh my God. And they're hypocrites because Obi-Wan gets like a romantic interest. So many other Jedi, I believe, are just on the low, like sneaking out from the temple and going to the club and just letting off steam. But Anakin hasn't been let in on that. And we'll talk about how they in general just disrespect Anakin here because they also are telling him uh, you're the chosen one. The pressure of the balance of the force right there on them shoulders, boy, how you doing? Now I've addressed all of those factors and I haven't even gotten into the fact that Anakin is also starting to be manipulated by the biggest, baddest evil the Star Wars universe has ever seen, Darth Sidious, who is implanting ideas in Anakin, all kinds of dark side force magic, visions that I think he's infecting Anakin with, just left, right, up, down, everything he can do to make sure this boy is starting to feel as isolated as possible from the Jedi who already make him feel pretty darn isolated. But Anakin actually being someone who really wants to resist the dark side, once these factors start coming in on him, he goes and talks to other Jedi about it and he receives almost no support in return. Okay, let's, let's get into the main trauma before we get into that though, because I want to talk about the fact that yes, he takes his love interest, who he, good on him, decides to not obey crazy religious doctrine and marry and start a romance with, and I believe that's why he did not go to the dark side way earlier, but he takes her and goes to his home planet and witnesses his mother die in his arms because, yeah, no one ever saved her. And I believe quite intentionally, narratively, that instilled the idea within Anakin that the Jedi are often failures. They did not succeed in saving 
his mother, and more importantly, they did not allow him to save his mother. That's a big problem, because he can now tie the death of his mother as a direct result of the lack of action from the Jedi. Oh my god! That's a good justification for going a bit crazy. Obviously, he then kills the men and the women and the children too, and Padme discovers a kink. We're not gonna touch on that. No judgment, Padme. We don't kink shame. Okay, maybe that kink deserves to be shamed a little. If you're into genocide, talk to a therapist. Oh, I forgot to even mention the physical toll that's taken on at this point. He loses hands and sh Just constant violence this guy's baptized in. But all right, yeah, let's get back to that time where he actually did reach out to the Jedi for advice on very reasonable emotions. He goes to Yoda and talks about how afraid he is. Inserts, I originally said the wrong thing here. I thought this was the scene where he said like the hate leads to anger, he's to suffering, which isn't actually the scene. He instead just kind of gets some like dime store stuff that again is total BS. Total bull Again, I've seen people be like, oh, that's them telling us that emotions work differently in this world. Uh, or it's just Yoda not being super well written because there's no other real concrete evidence of like human or they're not human, but the humans within Star Wars emotions working fundamentally different than our own. In fact, we are shown several times throughout other Star Wars movies that these are basically, yes, just humans that didn't start on Earth because Earth is not in that galaxy. It's a galaxy far, far away. And so when he tells Master Yoda about the fear of Padme dying he's having from these visions, all he's basically told, and this is what Yoda's really telling him is, don't be afraid. Okay, but like, how can, how can I, how can I not be afraid? How could I take proactive action to handle these emotions, Master Yoda? That would, that would be a really nice thing. Oh, right. You don't have a degree as a child psychologist, do you? Yoda, in fact, you've made a career out of training child soldiers. And so there's one person who starts to offer Anakin actionable steps to maybe avoid losing the one thing he's consistently had as love in his adult life, aside from Obi-Wan, Padme. And yeah, it's a Sith because the Sith are far more effective than the Jedi. So in summation, what we have got is a vulnerable, exploited child who a religious organization took advantage of because they saw how powerful he was, and through their vague prophecies they didn't entirely understand, they just put the weight of it on his shoulders, threw him into war during his most important developmental years, allowed his mother to die, didn't even just like take her out of slavery and set her up on like Coruscant somewhere. Uh -uh. Gave Anakin one role model who was his trainer, who kind of failed and more just became his friend and didn't really look out for the red flags that were developing there because they were apparent. If you watch the Clone Wars, oh my God. And then once he started having direct dark influence on himself and he came to Yoda, who even should have like felt that, all he got was like dime store advice that leads him no actionable solutions to a problem and Anakin knows what happens if you do not take steps to save someone you love. Yeah, he, he had some pretty good justifications for snapping over to that dark side. And I actually think if you just did one more redrafting of the prequel trilogy script and changed some of the performances a little bit, that would have hit way harder. But let's talk about once he actually turns, because this is where some of the bigger criticisms come in. And they say Anakin just goes so dark so fast. And I think one, he's being pushed to go darker faster by Sidious. Like there's, there's, they talk about dark energies and stuff, and I think that's being put in him. But two, yeah, he goes straight up and just murders the Jedi Temple. But at that point, his anger that he is embracing has just shifted the Jedi into being the catalyst for almost every problem and evil in his life. He now views the Jedi as evil, hence the corny line, from my perspective, the Jedi are evil. I, George Lucas, for the love of God, learn subtlety, but apparently be less subtle because people didn't get this. So he wipes out the Jedi temple, he comes across the children, and yes, he kills the kids, which is harder to believe Anakin would do. I do go, wow, that's a dark step. But I do think it actually has some justification as well, because in my mind, I'm going more into conjecture here. Anakin saw himself as saving these kids. 
by killing them. Because they were already being developed into being evil Jedi, at least how Anakin saw it. And so there was no going back. They were going to be Force-sensitive adults who were going to use that power. And Anakin saw their future as being bathed in blood, suffering, hatred, and anger. Yoda's own words now pushing him towards believing all these kids, due to the era I'm about to bring about, are going to live a life as painful as mine. I personally think Anakin saw it as mercy killing. And then the final beat for Anakin's complete turn to the dark side is Obi-Wan bringing Padme to him and not allowing her to have a full conversation uninterrupted with Anakin and instead intruding and coming out on the platform and showing himself to Anakin, which uh, Obi-Wan, maybe not the best call right now. And instead of approaching Anakin, which I get he just saw him murder kids, there's going to be immediate resentment, anger, hatred from Obi-Wan towards Anakin, which I think we do see in this fight, despite how Obi-Wan at the end is like, I love you, Anakin. Straight up, 100%. He is hostile towards Anakin right away. Look at his stance. He does not give or approach Anakin with even the minutia of, I'm your best friend. I am the person who got you to where you are. Instead, he's like a disciplinary older brother, which Anakin did not need. It's combative, and with how Anakin is viewing all Jedi as evil, it lumps Obi-Wan into the evil, which I genuinely believe if Obi-Wan had handled the situation differently, he could have separated himself from that categorization in Anakin's mind. But he missed his opportunity, and it cost Padme her life. Now, is Anakin blameless in all of this? Absolutely not. The guy is still responsible for his actions. I am not trying to say he is blameless, but narratively, through the lens of the story we're told in Star Wars, Anakin's corruption was preventable time and time and time and time again. And we know that because we see him slowly descend into it. And so the criticism of just Anakin was a whiny kid, which I see all the time, who never matured and was just easily turned to the dark side, is bull. He tried to not go to the dark side. Of course he didn't develop right. He was never given a proper childhood. And finally, he was being told to repress everything by a religious cult. Uh, that's a very earned turn to the dark side, in my opinion. Mic drop, I'm out.